I bet they do, and it's uh, now we do have coming up this next game. It follows staying in the girls' division, T Miss out of Quebec, and uh, Seaway Valley Devils out of Ottawa area, out of the yes. the, the yep. hotbed of Broomball in Ottawa. Um, so lots of French speakers in these two teams. I will not be doing any of the play-by-play in French. I don't know if you will be, but <laughs> Absolutely not. sorry to our <laughs> Quebec and Ottawa French-speaking uh, viewers. We can't be doing the bilingual thing for you, but uh, certainly appreciate these teams coming from all over and uh, and coming in from Quebec and coming in. For, and there's boys and girls teams or men's and women's teams here from Quebec and from the Ottawa Valley area. So it's neat to see those hotbeds of brew ball represented. Um, so, as you said, you've known those presidents of Broomball for a few years with yep. your involvement, and they'll come in here for the whole week and represent their organizations. Yeah, and then and uh, they'll head to, uh, uh, after this, they're going to fly out to Manitoba to Portage Prairie, where right. the senior nationals are, um, and then they'll have uh, meetings there. Um, <laughs> and it, it'll start, pro- I think it starts on the Wednesday too and over on Saturday. And would so. that be full-time jobs for those gentlemen like that? No, there's only uh, uh, George, he's retired now. Okay. So he uh, um, and Jerry, no, they're, they're not full-time jobs. There's only a couple full-time yeah. jobs in the CBF itself. That's what I wondered. Yeah, yeah there's uh, a lady that looks after the uh, all the uh, coaching part of it, um, make sure everybody's certified and everything all across Canada yeah. and setting up programs and whatnot. And uh, I, I don't know if the, maybe the treasurer or whatnot is, too. I'm not 100% Just some sure of the that. administrative roles yeah. that you need uh, yeah. all the time, yeah. yeah. Um, and you did see the updated standings there. Uh, some of these women's teams getting three games in today, so getting their tournament kicked off in a big way. Certainly a good win there for Palmerston to go now to 2-1 and one on the day. So yes. that, that'll be nice for them to go to bed tonight knowing they're off to a great start. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, you can come out uh, with three games in the first day and come out two and one. That's, uh, that's a big bonus. Because if you're if you're zero uh, and three or yes. one and two, it, you're you're thinking you're going to have to run the table to, yeah. to finish the tournament off. And so in this game, we have in red the uh, Seaway Valley Devils, and then in white we have Team S out of Quebec. So in Ontario against a Quebec team here uh, should be another great game. We have not been disappointed. Every game we've seen today uh, that I've seen, what we've broadcast, have been very close. Yeah. Uh, I think there was one game today, a 9-1 score for somebody, but other than that, the games have been pretty close across the board. Yeah, they have been. And that game you were talking about, 9-1, that was uh, the sting from Ottawa. Uh, they're, they're the best team here, as far as I'm concerned, and they can compete with probably any men's team. Is that is. right? They're, they're a very good, fast, fast team. So we will see, uh, as I said, Team Miss in white and the Devils in red. And here we go. And a face-off win there by number two, Marie Soleil Dumont. And Team Miss right to the attack. Going in a three-on-two. And you can see number 13 charging the net to cause a disruption in there. Can the ball get to her? Almost through the legs of the defender from the Devils. The Devils have it now along the boards. They get it out. Oh, look at the speed of number 15. And unfortunately, I don't have... Oh, that's 16. I'm sorry. I do have that. Michaela Kuntz, that was some speed. Almost uh, got her a chance, but the ball just knocked away. And she's got to go for a change after that burst. The Devils with control in the in the team miss zone. Some physical play along the boards. Another physical start to this game as well. And the Devils just kind of playing that board game, protecting it. And that was Blair Burnett. Oh, and there's a good check. I wonder how much uh, um, energy T- or uh, Seaway will have because this is their third game of the day too. I think it's maybe Team S is in the second game. So. I don't even know what time it is anymore because it seems like we've been here forever. I think it's <laughs> 12 minutes after 9, so it is getting later in the day. And as you said, the third game, that can test your legs. And they know they've got to get up and do it again tomorrow. So it is funny sometimes at tournaments like this, you know, as some of the presenters said at the, you know, you want to enjoy the social time and all that, of course you do, but also these players recognize they're here to do a job yep. and they've qualified to be here and they want to be at their best whenever they step on the ice. So th- these opportunities don't come around all the time, so you don't want to make the best there, of it. There's a shot to the slot. Oh, and a beautiful blocker save. It's still there in the slot for number 55. Uh, Brittany Pleur de Bouc had a great, two great chances and a beautiful blocker save. 
in net is Keeley Zandvelt. So, so far, T Miss putting the pressure on. And there's a blocked shot across the slot, but nobody there for T Miss. Out to the blue line, but kept in. Number 88, Melody Boulou. 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 That's what it is. And she has it down in the corner, being chased there by Jessica Richer. But Beaulieu plays it around, and here's the woman that had the great chance, Pleur de Bouc. Reverse the ball all the way around, chips it up the board, but it's not out. There's the Devils player to keep it in. Oh, and a big body check. Big body check delivered by Alexa Lorty. But right up after that check is McMillan to put it into the slot. T miss hemmed in a little bit here and now uh, McMillan with the hit after absorbing one herself so we are off to another physical start to uh, same as the previous game and we're going to get a tripping or an interference penalty now an interference penalty to the Devils looks like Blair Burnett and you can see that was kind of a play from behind Doug that was right in front of the referee yeah she's not going to get away with that one when you give a shove from behind you're going to be getting a penalty for sure and talk about maybe zapping some momentum because, and here it is. Just, to, oh, and she even got her arms, yeah, tried yeah. to be sneaky about it, but her arms got a little too extended. Yeah. And, you know, momentum zapper, her team looked like they were pressing there. Yeah. So both teams have had moments of, of, of looking dangerous in this game so far. Makes me think we're into a good one. The Seaway Valley Devils from the Ottawa area in red and the T-Miss team out of Quebec. And a face-off win for T-Miss, but they've got nobody coming. We're going to get a holding penalty on the center player, center, center woman. Right before that, I was just about to say she wins the face-off, but there was nobody coming to get the ball, yeah. which kind of forced her into holding up her, her counterpart for too long. Yeah. Even up call pretty quick, four yeah. seconds in. Yeah. <laughs> so here it is. You can see she wins the face-off back. Holds up her player. If she lets go there, she's probably fine, but nobody's got the ball yet. Yeah. If a winger came in there and just uh, tapped the ball back, there's no issue. But And that is Dumont in the box. Yeah, Dumont in the box for Team Miss and Blair Burnett in the box for the Devils. So it's four on four essentially for two minutes. Four minute power play for the Devils, but that won't, or four second power play, sorry, at the end of it. And here goes Marie May Bri Briand. Chips it up the boards. She had moved it on to her teammate, Anne-Marie, but the player's flying all over the place here. With the ball now is Bull Duke. Bull Duke back to difficult finding the numbers. Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie with it now. Oh, and Marie right into the crease, but nobody there. The Devils will try and get it out, but fanned on it. Fanning on the ball was Richer. She's got it back. She cannot get it past Bull U. As Beaulieu to the, tries to play it back to the side, but just off the, out of the reach of her teammate. She had a player wide open in front of the net, and she didn't see her. She pushed it off to the corner. It would be interesting. We were talking uh, late in the previous game about players calling for it and communicating yeah. with each other. So important. Now they've got control of it in the corner, and four on four is a little different too because you don't have someone everywhere you expect them to be. No, it's a it's a man-on-man -man situation, so you... Uh, if you don't take your man, then there's a lot of open ice out there. Kicked out. And we have a potential break. Oh, look at the fast players battling for it. Taking each other down. That's pretty fair play there, and the referees agree. There's a good body check. Uh, this team from Quebec, uh, T-Miss, looks like they want to lay the body. They're going to set the tone physically here in this game. As a rule, teams from Ontario and Quebec are physical. Uh, it's usually a physical game. They don't like each other too yeah. much. <laughs> well, it can make for some heated competition, so we appreciate that as viewers of the sport. As the player hustles back to get onside, so the onside line is center ice. And if you've been watching us all night at home, you've seen some great action here live on Rogers TV or on our YouTube channel. So if you are watching in Gray County and you have friends not in Gray County with our Rogers feed, tell them about our YouTube channel. Search it up and they can watch this action live. So people in Quebec and in Manitoba and Saskatchewan 
and uh, you know, Eastern Ontario and Ottawa can watch their favorite players play or their nieces and nephews or whoever it is, grandchildren play in these games. And then get down here later on this weekend and watch it live. Here's a chance right into the slot, number 13 with a shot, and a head save and a blocker save. Can he pass it up front? Oh, and knocked away. Number 13, Annabelle Damour had some great chances. And then a pass she tried, just didn't quite connect. Here it is into the slot again. She's got it again, Damour. Damour with it on her backhand. Tries to pass it in. Her forehand wide open out front. It gets across, and a backhander, and a chest save. Oh, T missed with some great chances, but Zandbelt, Keeley Zandbelt, in net for the Devils, equal to the task. Very tall goaltender in the net for uh, the Devils, and that helped on a couple of those shots. She's very young. I think she's only 15 or 16, too. Is that right? Well, certainly not shy with this opportunity. Another physical battle in the corner. And both of these teams are 2-0, and oh, so this is an important... The one team's going to bed tonight at their hotel feeling pretty good about themselves. The other one should still be proud of themselves, but it'll sting a little bit. Now we see two Zand belts on this team, the goalie and number 18, Kira Zand belt on defense. So, you know, sisters, cousins, whatever, but uh, again, need to see the family connections in these age groups that encompass a number of years. Number 13, Annabelle Damour has been dangerous this period. Gets it toward the net, but just misses. Off in the corner, the Devils have it. But T miss, battling hard there and shoving. And again, the physical play continues. Nothing dangerous, just good hits and shoving on the boards and good physical here. play. We have a two-on-one if the ball can get over. Here's Koontz with a high shot. Oh, and a nice save with no rebound. Michaela Koontz down the wing. And here's this chance. Michaela Koontz comes in and look at how aggressive and out at the top of her crease. The goalie is here. And that we're going to have to see. I haven't actually seen the back of that goalie to know which one is in the net. So, we, you know, when we think about these low-scoring games and, you know, getting into playoff seeding and stuff like that, uh, goals for and against can matter. So, Team Miss has three goals for in their two games and zero goals against, where the Devils have three goals for and one against. So, again, depending on the outcome of this game, that, that those types of things can come into play at the end of round rob. Yeah, especially uh, um, when you get head-to-head -head matchup, whether you're going to be uh, A-side or B-side, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So right now the Devils controlling it, but both teams have looked dangerous so far. You can see why both of them are 2-0 and on the day. Right now the Devils have good control in behind. Nope, the team miss is going to get it, but chased down there by Sarah Richer. Along the boards, now it's into the slot, but onto the stick of the defending team miss player. But it's not out. Marie-Yves Bouchard. So we mentioned there might be some French-speaking people with that Ottawa group as well. And uh, Marie-Yves Bouchard may be one of them. I shouldn't assume. Okay, 89 is in net. Emily Moreau is in net for uh, Team Miss. They have two goalies with them, as most teams do. Uh, Doug talked about how grueling the week can be, so sharing the goaltending duties is pretty important in three game days and stuff like that. Yeah, it's pretty tough for a goalie to do, uh, to do eight games. Um, in the week. Usually they wind up pulling something when they, uh, yeah. when they put that many games in. Yeah, it's hard to stay at your best when you're playing that much. So here we go. The Devils have had it in the offensive zone for quite some time. Now it's on the stick of Team Miss. Oh, but fanned on the ball. And the Devils get a chance to get it back again. Stepping in from the blue line is Jasmine McNairn. McNairn plays it into her teammate, Elisa Bollinger. Bollinger out to the slot. It's up in the air, and here's a back end, a knee. <laughs> I think that uh, actually Bollinger held off on that shot because she thought her teammate McMillan might have had a better chance at it, and by the time she shot, she was out of position. But that dropping to your knees is a real strategy, whether it's defensively to bang a ball away or to get a shot like that. Like, it's used 
as a strategy, not just falling over. Yeah, so, some sometimes, yeah, to protect the ball or whatnot. Um, then you get some people that uh, just get in a bad habit of yeah. going on their knees to shoot. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah you, I could see that too. You kind of use it as a bit of a crutch as opposed to yeah. uh, a smart play all the time. Yeah. So as the Devils change, it looks, well, I was going to say it looks like Team S might get it out. Uh, and they do. But right onto the stick of Brooklyn Woodside for the Devils. Woodside back to Bollinger is going to take it. She's got lots of time as Team S changes. She plays it just along the boards. Strong up the boards is, it's hard to see them right below us, but that was Jessica Hendley got it into the offensive zone. But now here's a bit of a break for Timis. They're going in two on two. Into the corner, positionally well played there by the defender, Brooklyn Woodside. It's kind of that balancing act on defense between sealing people off but not being so aggressive that they can just chip it past you and go. Exactly. Uh if you can maintain body position on them instead of taking yourself out of the play, then you still got uh, you still got a chance to make a play with the ball. Henley made a strong play there. Looked like she's out of position, but just with a, a physical shove, got the ball off of her, uh, her opponent's stick. Back in behind her own net is uh, Brienne. Brienne surveying the action. See where to go up on the wing, and a nice chip play, but it's not going to get out as. Salid McRae keeps it down in deep. But now with the ball is Anne Marie. Or Anne Marie had it, but she played it down behind her own net. With it now is Brienne. But she's covered. Held on for a little too long. McRae on Brienne. There now it's up the wing to Anne Marie. Anne Marie tries to chip it, but fans on it which allows McCray to get back and keep it in again. Here's a shot coming. The shot does not get off as strong as she wanted it to, but still a little rebound sitting there. I think Maxime, Maxine Derependo, oh, okay. I'm gonna work on this one, number 19, Maxine. Uh, she would have wanted to get a bit of a stronger shot off there, but even from that far out, the goalie's gonna have a pretty good chance to save it. Usually as a rule, but at any level from that far out, the goalie should, should probably stop it. Derek Pentigny. Um, this is one I wish I had a check with the manager beforehand, but uh, better we, you than me. <laughs> we don't always have access. Uh, anyway, she th that was a good shift for her, I thought, and McRae keeping kind of working as a team to keep the ball in on that side for the Devils. Just as Team Miss looks to get away, they lose the ball, and there's a great body check by Louis Mar Luanne Marquis, and another one by Bouchard. So these women have come to play tonight. They know they get a rest after this and get to go back to the hotel for a sleep. So leaving everything on the ice. 13 minutes essentially gone here in the first half. Two 18 minute halves. And off on a kind of a three on three where it was T-Miss from her, from her butt. She, it's still a play by the oncoming T-Miss player out into the slot. Oh, tried to pass across, but a good defensive stick by Bouchard. And here's a possible break. We've got at least a two. It's a two on oh. With the ball is Eby. Over across to number 15. Oh, tries to go five hole. It's not there. And a great save. Oh, my wow. goodness. <laughs> Michaela Coots, well, those are the ones you have nightmares about. We've seen that a couple times. Uh, we saw that in the Palmerston game. Some missed great chances like that. But great goaltending by Moreau, too, to not give up on it. Yeah, that's going to haunt them if they don't come out with the uh, goal in this game. Yes. Zan Belt in a good battle over there with Pleur de Bouc for T-Miss. And T-Miss comes away with it. Alexa Lorty with it. Now back to her defense. Now back to Lorty. Lorty across the top to Briand. Brianne taking her time. Here's the backhander. But well blocked and defended by the Devils. Bouchard, no, not Bouchard, sorry. Uh, Zandbelt creates her some space and gets it up the boards. Now she gets it back, a little give and go. Whoa. Zandbelt with a swing there. Thankfully didn't connect with it. Oh, and a missed pass. It looked like uh, Anne Marie was off to the races, but the ball just didn't get to her. 
The coaches don't need to emphasize finishing your check because these women are already doing it. This is the most physical game I've seen today, men's or women's. Yeah. Like I say, the Quebec and Ontario, they don't yeah. like each other. So yeah, that, you're, yeah. you're going to see that more and more as the tournament goes on, too. Well, yeah, the intensity would pick up, yeah. and as teams identify who they have to beat and yeah. stuff to get to the next round. And again, these teams will know that each of them are 2-0, and oh and they need this game. Yeah. So the, a bit of a miscue by T-Miss, but they get it out. Ball back to Woodside. Woodside over here to Zandbelt. A third Zandbelt. Holy cow. Okay. And there's the flip up. Going to be chipped by. No, a nice kick play. And Anne-Marie takes it into the zone. She's got a bit of space. Moves it over to her teammate, Pellerin. Pellerin back to the point to Bolduc. Bolduc to Pellerin. That was high. It was. It'll be a penalty. Yeah, high broom. So reaction play. That's all it was. Claudine Pellerin with a high stick. And uh, for those new to broom ball, you know, in... Hockey, for instance, that's just a whistle and you get a face-off. But in broom ball, that's a dangerous play, a penalty. Yeah, anything over your shoulders, contact with the ball, is, uh, is a penalty. Never used to be years ago. Yeah, there it was. Yeah, about go to head height. So. Well, and I remember, um, you know, when I knew a little bit about ringette, if you lift your hands above your head at any time to cheer for a goal or anything, it's a penalty. So, oh, really? Yeah, so it's kind of high stick rules are different across all these ice sports. Yeah. But that's not a bad rule. I mean, it keeps the safe safety of the game. And yeah, we used to uh, we used to kill penalties. We'd be standing at the red line, and they'd do a flip, and we just bat it down yeah. with the high stick. And so it saves people getting hit in the head for sure. Well, then, actually, having said that, so it actually, yeah, allows for that. That here's a chance. Allows for that flip play to be um, even more dangerous now with that current rule. So there's a, a hand pass into the zone, even though even though it was to herself. Once it enters the crease off your hand, it's blown down. Yeah. Here's the two on over over to Kuntz. The goalie stays right with her. Almost gets it on that. Well, it does get it on the second swing on the rebound. Oh, and a swing and a miss. <laughs> EB missed it coming across. Jeez. Face off controlled by the Devils. And up comes Burnett. Burnett chips it in with the ball 25 is Eby who missed a couple of breakaways back to number 11 Burnett now to Eby Burnett has it slowing things down on the power play we've said it many times the power play is very important live and die on your power play and penalty kill Oh, that's not a good pass. Just kind of went off the end of the stick. As soon as uh, Bollinger, number 14, released it, you could see she wasn't pleased with what she had just done. Chasing it down is Emily Zanbelt, but she's beat to it by T-Miss, and with it now is Tanya Beaulieu. But Beaulieu loses it, so Zanbelt has it. Setting up the power play. Now up top to Bollinger. Can she do something better with it this time? She does. She moves it over to Burnett. What's a good shot? Right into the midsection of the goalie Moreau. But there's lots of people in the crease to knock that. That's a good play by the Devils. He misses uh, her uh, box is uh, out fairly high. See where he needs to move the ball down low and uh, open up that area down low to try for... Uh, top of the crease shot here or something yeah so if that box is up high the devils were playing right into their uh, right into their method because they were passing it across the top yeah so face-offs let's see who can control this face-off so I wonder if we're saying it was a late change or something here oh, or I, think, I think it's maybe a strap on her helmet or oh something, okay maybe. Is that done? Oh, and a nice face-off win by Mackenzie Kuntz. Ball controlled. Kuntz has it at the line. Two Kuntz players on this team as well, so lots of same last names. And getting it now is Josie Lozon. Back out to Bouchard. Marie-Yves Bouchard. Kuntz. Bouchard. 
maybe up to Koontz. Can we? Are we going to see a shot here from the point? There's a shot from that mid middle of uh, the boards. And so they're still playing across the top, aren't they, Doug? They're not working the ball down low or, or into that slot area. There's a shot to the ball. Oh. And a weird, a couple of weird bounces. And it comes right to Josie Lozon. Yeah, Johnny on the spot there. They actually got the perfect bounce right onto her step. And she, if we, when we see the replay, I think you'll see she's actually sort of covered. But yeah. the defender kind of goes for the ball and it bounces somewhere she didn't expect. I have a look here. Her foot might have been close to being in the crease too. So there's Kuntz onto the wing. Yes, her foot was in the crease. That should be waved off. That should be no goal. Now. Because her foot was in there before the ball went in. So is T miss T miss didn't see it or no, I didn't they probably wouldn't notice that. From that far out. Yeah. So that's that's actually a rule we haven't discussed yet. So um, the ball has to go in the crease before your foot can. Yes, absolutely. You can go in after it, but you can't be in there first. And as you saw, she was fairly covered, but just the way the ball bounced, the defender kind of reached for it and it went somewhere else. So with 20 seconds left in the period yeah. on the power play, the Devils take a crucial 1-0 lead. This will be a great angle. We're going to get an overhead view here, so let's watch the ball. Foot you're, is in. Yep. yep, you're absolutely right. That's a tough call for the for the uh, referee to make, though. It's a bang bang play. So. And Alex, Alexa Lorty was right in there with her, just you know that split second of not having her stick, and that's it's in the back of the net. Yeah. So that was there. You see the Devils getting the message from their coach. What's the message they're going to be getting from their coach right now? Oh, she's. Uh she probably wasn't too happy how they started the period, but she's happy how they ended it because uh, Team S put it to them pretty good right off the start. Yeah. But so she's saying probably right now you've got your goal, play good defense in your own end. Don't give them the middle of the ice. Keep them to the outside. And then, uh, and we haven't actually to build on your point. We haven't talked about the Devils goalie Keeley's hand belt for a few minutes. You're right. So she made a few big saves early, and then we haven't heard from her since. No, no, she hasn't had to make very many saves. And what about team miss? You know, you give up a goal with 20 seconds left. Um, well, how's their coach trying to build them back up for the well, second half? That's the thing. He's going to have to try to build them back up. They're probably down a little right now. You just got to get them motivated again and uh, and try to get them to, to put a little more pressure on here and turn the tide. So we have 18 minutes of broom ball left here in this game. And... Um, I don't know what time it is anymore, and my uh, you've got a watch on there. That's good. My so phone 25 must be dead. To 10. So 25 to 10, and these girls are on the third game of the day. So sometimes what's interesting at this stage of a day of a tournament, you can see mistakes creep in because you've got tired athletes, yep. and no, no uh, level of athlete, athletic competition is immune to that when tired athletes set in. Yeah, and it's usually your mind that goes first. Yeah. As soon as you think, oh, I should have been there, well, it's too late, right? Yeah. And a lot of that we might see how Team Miss rebounds after giving up that late goal. But they've shown, um, like, they had some pressure early, so we'll just see how this period begins. And there's a giveaway. And here's a chance. Breakaway, oh, and right into the bread basket. Get her right in the crest. And Aunt Annabelle Demur with a great chance coming in off the right wing. And a big save. We said we hadn't talked about Keeley's and Belt, but there she is. Uh, I want to thank Dairy Queen again for feeding the crew. I came straight here from work, and the volunteers have been here setting stuff up and getting stuff together. So really want to thank Dairy Queen for giving us some supper. It turns into a long night if you don't get anything to eat. So go uh, check them out, 3rd Avenue East in Owen Sound. And, uh, you know, you can say you heard about their contributions to the broadcast, and certainly the sponsors like to hear those thanks. But we thank them for sure. So, uh, Team Miss has it where they need it in the offensive zone. They made Keeley Zanvelt make a good save. But this could turn into a two-on-one for the Devils right away, how quickly it turns. If this gets chipped out to the front, oh, almost on the second effort, it gets chipped out front. But Team Miss right back the other way. Just a bit of pitch and catch here for a second. It's chipped past, going the offensive direction by McMillan. 
McMillan can't get away, and with it now is number two, Marie Soleil Dumont. She gets knocked down. And the ball's moved to the, oh, just off of the stick there of Blair Burnett. A two on three for T miss that doesn't really turn into anything dangerous. But we've seen Annabelle Demure, number 13. She doesn't need much space to get away, and she was lurking. So just some neutral zone, as I said, pitch and catch earlier. Nobody really establishing any zone time yet this period. A big body check there by Elisa, Alyssa Bollinger. Now coming away with it is T. Miss. And a nice pass across and going to the net. A give and go to the net. Oh, and it doesn't connect, but a good attempt by Alexa Lorty. Give and go into the slot. It's kept in. So a very good defensive effort by Bollinger. Goes down to one knee to block the shot and then kind of down to her belly to knock it down the ice. That's what C.O.A. keeps or needs uh, to keep doing is just keep getting the ball out. Make team miss turn and run for it and try to tire them out. Are we see is there a penalty here? It looks like it maybe. It was right below us, so I did miss it. Oh, here oh. it is. So it is called on number five. There's Josie Lozon. Holder for a trip. I couldn't see that right down below us. I was transitioning from our monitor down to yeah. watch it, so I did miss that. I didn't see it either. Was she our goal scorer? Ah, uh, there it is. Yep. Good, good job on the cameras out there, guys. Right by the timekeeper's box. Just got tied up and got her stick where it shouldn't be. So on the power play, a great opportunity here to tie it up. Tanya Beaulieu over into the sideboards. Bit, bit of a fake shot, so the goal scorer is in the penalty box, hoping she's not giving it right back here to Team S. There's a hard shot, high and wide. To me, the most dangerous player for Team S is out there, number 13, Annabelle Damour. Shot blocked, coming across. Team Miss has it on the half wall. So I don't know if their strategy is just to wind up and blast it, but that one almost worked. A weird bounce. Sometimes that can work. Get a, a good bounce off a leg. Yeah, get it. Yeah, get it to the net. There's another shot, and there we're targeting. Oh my goodness! Oh, right through the crease. I got so tongue-tied because I didn't I thought I was going to be calling a goal. <laughs> and a Marie Soleil Dumont with a wide open net. We talked about chances that nightmares are made of. It does not get out. A great defensive play at the red line by number 44, uh, Tanya Beaulieu. Let's see if she can get it back to the front. I'm sure she'd like her teammate Marie Soleil Dumont to get one here so she doesn't have to think about the one she missed. And here's Damour. Passes it across. Hard to handle at waist height. Back to the point. Beaulieu has it. Oh, and a good block. These players sure do take a beating blocking shots. sure over your career you've developed some welts <laughs> and bruises from an errant ball here and there. Too many. Too many. <laughs> Dumont has it now. Back up the wall to Lorty. Lorty blasted on net and two Devils players come through to... Oh! And a bit of a, a miscue there. Allows Timis to keep the ball in. But Dumont gives it right back. There's a chance! That's a tough play coming out of the box. She has to stay onside. Couldn't get the angle on the ball. So nothing doing well. Yeah, in the end, nothing doing on the power play for Team Miss. A couple of missed chances, but still one nothing Seaway Devils. Good, good uh, back check there by Alyssa Bollinger to keep the ball in. Bollinger has it now, but off to her teammate Bouchard. Bouchard gives it up. Bouchard gets it back. Well, that's a good goaltending play at the blue line for the Devils to have the ball kept in. Bouchard in the corner with it, just protecting the ball. They just want to kill off some time. 
Can't really totally sit back at this point, but you can no. certainly play careful. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to sit right back and let them come to you, but uh, but you got to be playing smart in the same breath. Yeah, if you've got it in the corner, you're not going to make a desperation pass no. that could get you caught deep. That's right. Oh, and a play into the slot, but a good body check separates the Devils from the ball. And here, oh, I thought here we go, Team Miss, but it's turned over at their blue line. Team Miss looks like they're starting to get tired here. I was just, I was just going to say something to that effect that the sloppy play might be setting in here. Yeah. And sloppy play always looks sloppier on defense than offense. Exactly. This group has been stuck out here for a while, too, for Team Miss, because it's been in their zone. Yeah, the Devils have got a change in here. Yeah. You also see sometimes this is when a penalty creeps in because yeah. you can't quite keep up. So here's the, is this going to get the ball out? It looks like it will. So that'll relieve some pressure and the defensive players can change. Oh, we've got a tripping penalty. Oh, I didn't see that well, one. Well, and she's walking right to the box. She this is Josie Lowe's on, oh, note number nine, Jessica Richer. These referees have eagle eyes because uh, we've met, oh, I didn't see that one either, so. So watch this, this is poor uh, Marie Soleil Dumont. You're gonna see the chance that she misses. Goalie totally out of play. Just straight, nobody even gets it. I was, I was hoping for her sake I'd see uh, somebody make a miraculous save. <laughs> now she's got, so they're gonna kick out a Devils player and Dumont has a chance here to win a face off and make a great offensive play. She does win the face off to get it started. Very important on the power play and would have been just as important for the penalty killer to win it. But here we go, Team Miss looking for the equalizer. Back at the point with Tanya Beaulieu. Oh, maybe just looking for a, a weird bounce. That was Annabelle Demur. She'll shoot it on net from anywhere. Well, there's a weird bounce. Oh, it's in! It is in! Finally, or I don't know which one was in, but that might have been Dumont knocking it in either way. It's 1-1. One, one. I think it was the second one. I think the first one hit them right in the corner and across the yes. post. But. And that strategy of blasting it on net paid off because that was about two weird bounces on the yeah. way to the net. Yeah, it was. So here we'll see here on the replay. Off the off two defenders. Off the goalie. Off, off the, the post. post. Wow. And Dumont not taking anything for granted goes right to the net. So, you know... Yeah. Obviously, we're not cheering for either team in no. this situation, but you sometimes cheer for players. She had missed that open net, yeah. so it is nice to see her kind of redeem that and poke that one in. A absolutely, and uh, it actually going off two of Seaway uh, um, players before it even got to the net, and the goalie still had a chance, yep. even still made the save. And there's a potentially dangerous play. No, can't quite catch up to it to the Seaway uh Seaway Valley Devils was Jessica Hendley. This should be a great shot. We love these overhead cameras. And a nice save by the goalie there. That was going right in. Wow, off the post. And Dumont says, I'm going to finish this one. Jeez. That's how quick they can change, folks. Yep. Never a bad idea to shoot, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Keeley Zan Belt made a a great save off a couple of bounces, but uh, to no avail. 1-1 one, one here. And we've got a two-on-one. That's Dumont again. And she's got Demur. Demur with it on a break. Goes her back in. Oh, just misses on the blocker side. But a great hustle back on defense, too, to force Demur. So that play, Saeed McRae hustled back to make Demur kind of have to go to her backhand. So we're at even strength, the ball through the crease that doesn't find anybody. That's That one will go for icing. Yeah, I don't think she had to do that. She had time that she could have made a play and flip it out. Yeah, so watch this here. A two on one and a nice, nice play. Pass. Nice pass. When it was Demur earlier, Demur that when you and I both saw that two on one where she went toward yeah. the passer, yeah. that time gave herself lots of space and Dumont just had to kind of put it out in front of her and uh, turned into a great chance. So all the all-important offensive or defensive zone face-off is won by the offense. And there's another shot toward the net. And the ball was sitting there for a little while. 
Brittany Pleurd de Bouc, number 55, was in a dangerous spot. So T Miss is dominating the faceoffs. Yeah. Because Dumont's won two or three in a row, and that's just two wins in a row. And there they go get it back. So they're feeling good about themselves right now. Yeah, it's tough losing the draws all the time. You're always playing catch up, right? Whoa. So this is that point of the game, nine minutes left. Every shot is a scary one. Back to the point, with it is number 11. We do not have her number on the game sheet, but trust me, she's out there. Can this develop into a two-on-one? No, a good body check delivered by Beaulieu. The body check has been used quite effectively by both teams to separate players from the ball. To slow players up. And here's that number 11. I wish we knew her name because she just made a great defensive play to stay with it and get the ball. Get it up to her teammate, Brittany Pleurd de Bouc, who throws it up. I was very close to offside, but a good, potentially, you know, a, at our age, maybe a hamstring groin. damaging. <laughs> yeah, groin, that's it, groin damaging <laughs> stall there, but not these young women who are fit and flexible. Played into the corner by de Bouc. Now with it is Brienne. Brienne with a backhand shot up high over the net. Another backhander sails harmlessly beside and over the net. Now if I'm the goalie there, I leave that in the mesh and hope they blow the whistle. But they usually won't blow it, they'll make them play it. And here's into the slot. Can we get a shot away? So another physical battle in the corner. Number 55, Pleur de Boot. Against number 18, Kira Zandbelt. It's played out past the blue line, but not past the red line. Team is still sort of controlling the zone. There's a play out to the middle. That one does get out. Chasing it down is Jessica Richer. And a hand pass. This game's been... In, uh a lot of turns, the, the Seaway will carry the play for a while, and then team miss, and then back and forth. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been really a lot of uh, back and forth play. No. It's usually one zone for a while and then the other. Elaine Jinyak, number 27, settling in for Seaway. See if she can win a faceoff for them. Uh, and she does. So that's their first faceoff win in a while, and it was an important one. But that's going to get out past the line, so they've got to regroup. Can't go back in yet. Yes, just onside. Whoa! That is a big hit. Leveled by Marie May Briand. That's like one of those sort of suicide passes yeah. up the boards. <laughs> but everybody up and, and back at it. No problem, no harm, no foul. It's a good clean hit. But those can be good hits to deliver because you may get that player to, you know, look over their shoulder and pause a bit the next time the ball's coming to them. Yeah, or I noticed her there. She looked like she was wanting to yep. get her back, and then you draw a penalty too, yep. right? good point. She did go right to her and give her a little poke. You wonder yep. what she said. <laughs> I didn't like that French. Much. Yeah. <laughs> so and this is the body checker going with the ball now, Brienne into the zone. She gets roughed up there a little bit by Bollinger. Bollinger gets the ball now. Uh, they all stay on side. We've got a three on one. If they hurry. There's a good shot and the rebound's there. Back out to the point. Maybe a missed pass but the shot did create some havoc. And now on it is Burnett for the Devils. Burnett into the corner. Just chips it out front but nobody or everybody's a little too deep. Demours plays it up to the blue line. And her teammate, number 74, finishes off getting it out. Into the penalty box. We needed a whistle. People needed a change. So three on one there. And we um, a shot on net from Dallas McMillan with two people going to the net. The rebound didn't go to the right place, kind of stayed off to the side. Yeah, and then uh, 
the one girl there, she, this, this, the third player coming in was going to get the shot, and her own player poked it away yep. on her too. Yeah. So chipped out of the zone. Back on it is Brooklyn Woodside, but she's oh, and they chipped it away from each other again. But kept in well there by uh, I don't have the number for our name for number 99, so our team miss roster is a little uh, incomplete. There's a shot over the net, so just getting the ball toward the net. Team miss carrying the play, putting a bit of pressure on right now, but Seaway C Valley gets a blue line and not out. And here's an, oh, I just skipped about saying here's another three on one, but the ball takes a funny bounce. And it, as we've said before, this ball gets spinning away out there and doesn't always go where you think it's going to. No, well, it can roll off your broom oh. pretty easy. And you do notice some different modifications. Some people like to put the curve on their broom. Uh, is this a giveaway? No. Some people like to kind of cut off the one corner of their forehand. Yeah. There's even some uh, a broom out there that's got a rounded head too. Like a, they call it like a pumpkin seed. Oh, okay. And all that merchandise is on display and for sale, I'm sure, up in the concourse here at the Bay Shore. And T Miss is going to get an interference penalty. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Looks like Hendley maybe is going to get uh, the retaliation penalty. Because I thought she got held up possibly for an interference. But. And this is where T Miss has done their damage, was on the power play, so it's a hole. And of course the Seaway Valley Devils are not pleased about that at the four minute mark. So half of the last part of this period they're going to spend on the penalty kill. Well they hope half of it anyway. This could be the game right here. So some penalties at very crucial moments of this game to Seaway Valley that have allowed Team Mystic well get back in it and now potentially go up late in the game. 1-1, four minutes left. Both teams 2-0 today. So Battle of the Titans here at, you know, at close to 10 o'clock on uh, opening day. But certainly we are not getting cheated for broom ball action. Moving it around the top. We know that Team Mist is going to every chance they get blast it on net and go for a rebound or a funny bounce and it's worked for them. There it is. There's the shot. Okay, every time you, other people thought that was in too, that mesh bounces. Yeah, hit the side of the net. Yep. Seaway's got to do a better job of, uh, of plugging up the shooting lanes here or else they're going to be in trouble. And there's a high shot over the net. Referee has to duck too. Through the legs of Bollinger, but it's kicked away. Up top with it is Tanya Beaulieu. Now down to this half wall. Oh, and a missed pass. Can that be what Seaway needs to get rid of it? They don't get Yes, they do get it down. And here goes Bollinger after it. Oh, did the goalie just hurt herself? Oh, no, just upset with the pass that she made. <laughs> okay, so Seaway relieved the pressure for a little while. Can they get it down again? Yes, they can. Go for icing. Oh, right, on the power play, you still don't get to ice it. Oh, he waved it off because it wasn't a run back. They didn't keep running back for it, so he waved it off. And that's uh, what Ryan was talking about. You can't take it for granted. You have to prove to these officials that you're trying to get there. Yeah. It keeps them very honest as players. And Ryan Gregg was the best at making it look like he was running yeah. hard. <laughs> <laughs> he might have even admitted to that a little bit, that, uh, you know, there's an art in looking busy and looking like you're trying, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he was both the best at it. Yeah. So Team Miss kind of slow getting going again. It's back to even strength. So no damage done on that. Oh, oh, I might have spoken too soon. Oh, the ball just rolls away. It wouldn't have been power play, but right after. Back to the point for Team Miss. Gretzky has it. Well, I don't know what else to call her because she's number 99. I don't have her name on my sheet. Here's a shot and blocked, but right to is the stick of Team Miss. And that number 13, Damour, has been dangerous. But here's 88, Melody Beaulieu. 
Will you into 66, Anne Marie. She still has it. Bouchard knocks it away. Damour trying to get it for T Miss. She's on it. Back to Beaulieu. Beaulieu into the corner to Damour. They're going to play around with it in the corner. And there's Anne Marie on it. Gets knocked down by Bouchard. Good play by Bollinger to use her feet to get the ball clear while she gets organized. The T Miss hunts it down. Here's Damour. In the opposite position she'd been playing, but coming back to support her teammates. A nice pass by Beaulieu. It's across the slot. Demur was just a little bit too high. There's another shot to the net. There's a rebound. Oh, good job by Zan Belt. The ball drops to the ground, but she's on it as soon as it gets there. That's a dangerous, uh, dangerous play with a minute left. Get it to the net. You know anything can happen. Well, and there was a team miss player right there, but Zan Belt did a good job to gobble that up. Just leave it there to tease the player and then jump right on. It. So we've got maybe some of the other Ottawa area boys teams up there cheering on the Devils. I think that's the Sting guys for the look of it. And they're from that Ottawa area as well? Yeah. So you'll support, you know, oh, here's a shot out to the slot. Can't get it on her stick, but it does get to the net. 40 seconds left. T-Miss has control. We will go to a three-on-three -three overtime if necessary. Games do not end in a tie, even in the round robin. Here comes Marie, or, uh, yeah, Marie May Brienne. Still has it. Knocked away by Zandvelt. Zandvelt on it. Has to get up. 20 seconds left. The Devils can't make a mistake with it now. They don't get it out. It's in the slot. A pass, oh, just picked off nicely there by Kira Zandvelt. Five seconds left. It's out, and that should do it. Well, why not go to overtime? Two teams that are 2-0 and on the day, tied 1-1. It's been a good game, entertaining game. It sure has. I would say kind of what uh, we talked about at the beginning of this half, some sloppy play crept in there, possibly with some tired athletes yeah. and... Just some missed clearing attempts and things like that allowed for some extra chances. Yeah, and you're really going to see it now in this overtime. Uh, who's uh, who's maybe the more fit team? And so we go to three on three, where there's so much room anyway. And every mistake you make is potentially uh, ex exemplified. Yeah, usually a usually a mistake turns into an odd man rush. Yeah, as a rule. So you can see the coach for the Seaway Valley Devils there. Looks like she's probably talking about spacing and staying spread out. You know, I, I'm trying to read her hand language, but you just never know. Um, but it's been, it's been, as you said, it's not really run and gun where it's a chance at one and a chance at the other. It's more like five chances in one end than five chances in the other end. Yeah, that's the way it's been all game. So we'll see here. I'm not surprised that uh, Team Miss is starting with uh, Annabelle Damour out there, number 13. She's, to me, been the most dangerous player for them in open space. And she is the team captain. I think maybe Team Miss has a little more uh, team speed as opposed to the Devils. So, and, and speed kills in three on three, so. And we've got uh, Marie Soleil Dumont taking the face off, and I can't, and 44 is Tanya Beaulieu for Team Miss. Bollinger. Uh, Mackenzie Kuntz took the face off and back on uh, defense is number seven Emily Zandbelt to start it off. So the center is getting kicked out. That is Elisa Bollinger. And geez, Dumont does not lose face offs. She hasn't lost hardly any in the whole game. Yep. And winning them at crucial times at least in the play or in the power play and whatever. And there's Demur chases it down and wreaking havoc on Zandbelt. But Zanvelt comes out, and it's a, possibly a two-on-one. Yeah, I thought maybe uh, Zanvelt waited a split second too long to move that ball up. Take an extra half a step and gain the line and make the play. But there's that speed that you speak of. I, uh, Zanvelt has had a good game, played very well defensive positioning, but I don't think she's a speedster and it's going to charge up the ice. So changes for Seaway, but the... And, just one player change for um, uh, Team Miss. The defenseman changes, and now it's number nine, 99. There's a flip play. 
And it could be a two-on-one. That's uh, two-on-two. Dumont gets back. Played out to behind the net. Trying to hook that out front. Bouchard's got to be careful here. She doesn't get in too deep and leave the defensive position exposed. But she's got it. And back on her D was Evie. She's going to put it toward the net. Evie's going after it on the bounce. Evie has it for the Devils. She's challenged there by number 99. 99 down the wing, but Evie takes it from her. She's got to get it over the lines so where teammates can join her. And it's a three on two. Oh, that's a nice play by Bouchard. She stops up. Looking for a teammate to go to the net. And there's a shot high. Off her head. I think she did get it with her head. I was thinking that uh, Bouchard was waiting for somebody to cut to the net. Nobody really did. I thought she maybe shot with a shot there a little earlier. Yeah. But. Here's the shot here. Nobody pressuring her. Yep, right yep. off the beam. And you can see we've talked about how tall Keeley Zanvelt is in net for Seaway, but Emily Moreau is not that tall of a goaltender, but willing to use her head. She just needs to be as tall as the crossbar. That's right. In that situation. So we've had a good chance down in this end. Down in this end, the end we're seeing. Team Miss gave up a good chance. And here is number 66, Anne Marie. Has a break. Can she get up front? She gets a shot. But a good toe save by the goaltender. Nice back pressure there by Dallas McMillan to come and make her get the shot off from a bad angle. She's looking for a change, but the ball wanted to get past her by Blair Burnett. And there's a good pass on a two-on-one. T-Miss has a chance, and a goal! There is the overtime winner for T-Miss. Alexa Lorty. Seaway, uh, they were wanting to change there, and she went and makes the flip, and uh, she was too tired to get back. And what a play. Here it is here. So number 66, Anne Marie, knocks it down, is able to get stopped. No, she has a teammate over there. Oh, and the defender almost knocked it away, Blair Burnett. But look at this. No mistake. It came out of the net so quick, I initially thought that Zanvelt saved it. I thought she maybe got a toe on yeah. it too. But, but what a nice goal by Alexa Lorty with all sorts of time and didn't make any mistake. Well, what a fitting end to a game that was closely contested right from the start. T-Miss goes to bed tonight, ready for tomorrow's action with a 3-0 record. You can't start any better than that. And despite kind of probably feeling a bit sour about this game, the Devils can feel pretty good about a 2-1 finish on the day. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can come out in a, uh, the first day with a winning record, it's always good. Marie-Yves Bouchard, one of the assistant captains, is the player of the game for the Seaway Devils. And that the assist on the, the steal and the assist on the winning goal, and Marie with the player of the game for the Team Miss squad out of Quebec. Well, I'll tell you, if you're a fan of broomball or a fan of sport in general, we were treated to some very good games tonight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They were. Uh, that was a great finish to a good, game, good, uh, good first day. So, and you'll be around all week watching and cheering and and helping organize the event, mess or helping kind of run things. Yeah, absolutely. I'm here all week. I think I'm back on with you uh, tomorrow night for a game and Friday night. So you'll actually probably be in here more than most of the hosts. Um, you're. G you're going to be in with different people. This was my only night available, oh, okay. um, unfortunately. But we certainly appreciate the organizing committee, yourself and Ryan and others, stepping into the booth with us because you are the broomball experts, and we appreciate what you bring to the booth, certainly. Um, very quickly, we've had some overtime games, so we're short on time. Just your overall impressions of day one action here at the Juvenile Championships. Oh, it was a good day. Um, would have been nice maybe for our local teams to maybe have a better start, but... Uh uh, hopefully they can get things rolling tomorrow and uh, Friday and and uh, finish well. Hopefully yeah. they can get to A-side. That's, that's a big thing. And lots of broom ball left. If, uh, if you like what you saw on Rogers TV today on the YouTube channel, certainly tune in as the week goes along. We're broadcasting as much as we can. But also take the opportunity to get down to the Bay Shore over to the rec center. $10 a daily pass, I think, and maybe $20 for the whole weekend. Yeah. So it's a great deal for national level broom ball. I can't stress that enough that it's a big time event with some really great athletes. Uh, I want to thank Ryan Gregg in here, one of the co-chairs, uh, be in the booth with me for the first couple games and certainly um, 
Doug McGregor in here with me to finish things off. We want to thank you. Uh, so for my for myself, Michael Harris and Doug and Mark Perry and the rest of the volunteers out here with Rogers TV, thanks for joining us and join us again tomorrow for more Broomball action. <laughs>